for a final question, I could just ask you about your own experience with that, with practice and with Buddha nature mm -hmm. and what inspires you. Maybe you could share with us a little bit about how Buddha nature teachings have affected you. Well, yes, I must say, I think I said this already, but I, I personally coming across the Buddha nature teachings, I was extremely encouraged and inspired, you know, it, and the Gyulama in particular, it has this, <clears throat> it has this wonderful um, sort of, what could you say, it's, it has this sort of global view of what's going on. You know what I mean? Here we are, we, we sentient beings, and we're only a small part of the story in a sense, you know, there are the, there are the three jewels and um, uh, awakening is a, is, a, is a sort of goal. It's our sort of potential. And, and because of the existence of the three jewels that can be unlocked, um, you know, we can start removing our obscurations. And there's this wonderful passages that explain the signs of there being Buddha nature, you know, the very fact that we somehow yearn for happiness and, and want not to suffer. You know what I mean? We're, we're, we're really not just sort of inanimate creatures. Well, inanimate creatures is obviously a sort of bit of a paradox, but you know what I mean? We, we're not oblivious to the existence of something better and we're searching for it um, in, in ways that are not always um, very successful. And, the, you know, the Buddha nature teachings kind of sh show us how the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha can really lead us in the right direction. But that f fundamentally, you know, um, it's already there. And we mm. only need to look in the right place or we only need to start, you know, clearing the way clearing away the weeds, as it were, <clears throat> to discover what we already have. And the, I think the, you know, it's very good at removing the sort of inferiority complex that mm -hmm. it's very easy to have as a Buddhist practitioner. You know, we are ignorant, sentient beings, you know, um, blinded by uh, stupidity, anger, um, attachment, all the rest of it, you know, we, it gets laid on quite thick um, how what a miserable state we're in you know and bound to suffer in samsara and accumulating karma and all the rest of it and it's a very it's a very sort of encouraging and refreshing um, notion that you know even if we, we have a way to go you know that somehow it's possible it's 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 really possible almost in a sense inevitable you know it's a question of time because that really is um our true nature and then in the same way that um you know these teachings that there are no real differences between um the awakened buddhas and obscured sentient beings except for that little bit of you know almost non-existent obscuration mm -hmm is again incredibly encouraging you know it mm. makes it makes what separates us from awakening look quite flimsy and mm. um you know it it's it looks as if it's something that's quite workable something that we can actually do and and then again as i mentioned already this whole <clears throat> um way that the buddha nature teachings gives us a bridge to tantra practice um, and makes it um, not just a sort of fantasy, you know, you can visualize yourself as a, some sort of an enlightened deity um, and all of that means, all that that means. And the idea that when you're doing that, you really are contacting something that is there already, something that is um, innate in you and that is just waiting there to be discovered. And that you can, by beginning to imagine it, you can actually kind of uh, get to it and access mm. it and begin to um, uh, allow it to manifest. And I found that an incredibly interest, incredibly, sorry, not just interesting, mm. but inspiring um, uh, idea. 
Mm. And um, yes, I, to me, it made a huge difference in my practice. And many people say the same. You know, if you take the teaching seriously and, and really study them and find out what they mean, it's an incredibly positive message mm. and makes sense of so many other parts of the teaching. Mm. So, um, in a way, uh, we started um, with you explaining how there was a big sort of cultural gap and you were been moving from one to the other. Um, it's exactly this kind of situation where isn't it, you have a cultural or personal background with low self-esteem or self-hatred or you know, even ideas like original sin and so forth. And then you move on to a new refreshing <laughs> uh, view yes. of the life with yes. being innately good, uh, full of opportunities, possibilities. <laughs> and in fact, that also helps address the two questions that we didn't manage to address about you know, being born in the lineage or the family of the Buddhas. I think we are already in the family. We just have to make that manifest. And when one yes. starts the path uh, of a bodhisattva, you sort of come to the recognition that your true family is the family of the enlightened ones, or that even nature allows for so much development and creativity and production, which is one aspect that somebody wants to address.